Hi there, I'm Rebecca and I'm really warm welcome back to my channel Pumpkin Becky. This week's video is Meet My Hamsters 2 because I've got two hamsters and this is the second time I've done this video. Let's get started. Generally speaking, a hamster will live for somewhere between 18 months and two, two and a half, very occasionally three years old. Doesn't matter whether that's a Syrian, a Russian dwarf, a Rebrovsky, a Chinese hamster, that's about their age span. If you've been following us on social media, you will know that this year, not only did we lose Sophie and Cookie, our two Syrian hamsters, but also Pip and Heidi, our pair of Roborovsky hamsters. And yes, I know, we've got the piggies in the kitchen and they're lovely and they speak and it's wonderful, but there was something missing. Not having any hamsters in the house at all just felt really weird. So, we have now got ourselves <laughs> got Evie drinking and Phoebe drinking. Evie is the smallest guinea pig, but she's the noisiest and she drinks for England. We now have two hamsters back in our lives. Charlie is a male, long-haired, black-eyed cream Syrian hamster. And we have Bertie. And Bertie, I believe, is a male, winter-white Russian dwarf hamster. We found Bertie in the rescue section at Pets at Home. And when I adopted him, Pets at Home did tell me that he was actually female, but it became fairly clear that just purely from his body shape, he was a boy. The rump end of a female hamster is quite rounded, whereas with a boy, it tends to be more tapered. Bertie's colouring is really unusual. He has dark red eyes. That's completely natural. He's not albino. It just happens that he has red eyes. That's his natural colour. His coat colour is a really lovely, marbly black and white and it's quite unusual to find that sort of colouring in the pet trade uh, so to have found one that was available for adoption was really special. Bertie settled in really quickly he has several bed areas and he uses all of them whereas Charlie has one bed and that's it that's where he sleeps that's where his stash is when I was younger, I used to get my hamsters out all the time to have a play with them, but I don't know, when you reach adulthood, your sense of self-preservation kicks in and you really don't want to be bitten by a hamster. So with Cookie, with Sophie, with Minky, with Twinkie, <laughs> with Pip and Heidi, I've resisted trying to pick any of them up particularly. Sophie, you could uh, pop your hand over her back and just sort of lift her from one place to another. Uh, you would have seen that in the first video. She sort of starts to become more awake and moving around much more and she's trying to escape out of the, the tray of her cage. So I just pick her up and move her across the cage. And I kind of felt safe to do that with Sophie. Charlie was pretty skittish when we first got him, but I was absolutely determined that I was going to just be brave and try and tame him. Um, it is a leap of faith when you put your hands into that cage for the first time, but I took it slowly and I've tried not to do anything that would scare him. I think the most important thing to do is not to be rushed when you want to try and start taming your hamster. It's something you can only do in small blocks of time because they'll lose interest or they'll 
start to get a bit cross with you or they'll want to go and have a wee or if you've given them some food they'll want to go and empty their pouches as they won't keep their pouches full of food for very long they want to pack it in take it somewhere and depouch so try not to be in a rush try and be relaxed calm set yourself a block of time to do this and you might have to do it several times in one evening and repeat that for several weeks before you're fully happy that your hamster is tame. Charlie, we've not had him very long, so we're very early stages in his taming, but he will crawl out onto my hands and he will crawl over me and onto my shoulder. And it just takes a little bit of time and a little bit of bravery and a little bit of self-belief. Now, Charlie doesn't make life easy for me, although he wakes up probably about half past nine, ten o'clock in the evening, which is about when Sophie used to get up. Charlie likes to spend at least an hour in his bed grooming. And you can see him. You can see his little face and you can say, hello, Charlie, and he'll look at you. And then he'll say, yes, hello, but I'm washing, so I'm not coming out just now and you just have to wait. There is absolutely no point trying to tame a hamster if you are in a rush, you want to get it done on a deadline, you have to just, fine. Now yeah, this is on his terms. I, I can be calm, I can be patient. We will do this when you're ready to get up. Because if you disturb him while he's asleep, He's not going to trust you very much, or she. So that's a bad start to trying to tame a hamster. Now I haven't tried to tame Bertie at all. He's a very friendly little hamster and he doesn't really mind when you go to put food in. He will get into his bowl and wait for you to drop food in and he will sit and pouch it and you can just about stroke him on his side but he'll he, he does flinch a little bit so I don't want to push it I'm quite happy that he feels comfortable enough to wait for me to give him his food in by sitting in his bowl it's it's quite a nice little interaction and he'll come and he'll talk to you and put his paws up and he's cute <laughs> as I said earlier Bertie was marked up in pets at home as a female dwarf hamster and I did really want a female because with Charlie being a boy uh, they, they have a smell, they do, they're a little bit smellier than a female hamster, Syrian, dwarf, whatever. I sort of thought if I've got two boys and they're relatively close to each other they might upset each other and they might be more inclined to scent mark all the time and make it really really smelly and I didn't want that and I didn't want them upset but we had got Ursula now Bertie home by then and fallen in love with him so he stayed <laughs> When I'm cleaning Charlie out, I will pop him into his ball and he will have a clonk around the kitchen. He's not very sure of it. He's only been in it a couple of times and he did get himself a little bit stuck somewhere. It's really important that when you put a hamster in a ball, you supervise them because they can get stuck really easily. He got himself stuck between um, a box on the floor and the side of a chair. <laughs> and he did have a little wee. Luckily in the kitchen we've got slate flooring so I just gave it a really good scrub but he was a little bit bit panicked that he'd got himself in a funny situation so he'd had a wee and then he, when I found him he was just sitting there washing. He'd probably only been there for about a minute but it was enough for him to be a little bit anxious about the situation but he was fine once I got him out. Bertie does not go in a ball, that's not suitable for dwarf hamsters, but he does have a flying saucer wheel which he absolutely loves and I cannot get a photograph of him on it because he flings himself around so quickly. 
He does really like the base of it though, it's kind of like a... And he's managed to make his nest underneath between the legs. So that's one of his three nest signs. It's now half past five, it's far too early for Charlie or Bertie to be up and about. So we're gonna wait till a bit later and come back and finish filming. Here's Charlie. It's now quarter to midnight, so it's a long time since I filmed the first bit of the video. See, he's very inquisitive. He does want to know what's going on. But what I first started to do was feed him through the bars. Just get him used to taking food from our fingers. And then slowly I built up to this. getting him used to the sound of my voice and the sound of his name was very useful. Charlie, come on. Charlie, the trouble is he now knows where I keep his food so he always heads himself over that way. But there we go, we've got a Charlie Farley. And what I like to do is not hold him too far away from his home. Ugh. Are you being a monkey on purpose? I think you are. Pickle. Nice steady breaths. Say his name. Charlie. Charlie. Oh dear. Oh, don't you come out again. It'll be fine. 
good boy. Well done. Good boy. Good boy. Okay. So this is where we are at the moment. We're just doing this little, he comes out, he sits on my hand for a minute, and then he goes back again. Good boy. We're just getting used to handling him. And him being handled. So I'm not 100% confident with him. And he's not 100% confident with me. But it is a start. It is a process. <laughs> getting there and this is a lot further than I've got with any of the other hamsters I've had in my adult life here we go good boy I don't know you're a sweet boy aren't you So there we go, I think we'll probably leave it there for tonight. <laughs> He's a little bit jumpy. Good boy. Good boy. Are we ready to go on? Say good night now. Night night. No. Good boy. And then just to say thank you. Oh gee, what happened? Shall we have a meal worm? Good boy. That's all he cares about. half of that on the floor. And you come out again. He's tough. Put your waist pants on. Johnny? So there we go. That was your little introduction to Charlie and Bertie. Hopefully they will make more appearances soon. Thank you so much for watching. Please remember to rate, share and subscribe to me here on YouTube. And until next time, bye.